Your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens. As your glory fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name.
Good morning, church, and welcome. Hope you're having a good weekend. We've got a lively song to start off with called My Hallelujah. Welcome this morning. It's great to hear a buzz of conversation. That's great. Open up the doors again. Let the King of glory in. His kingdom will never end. Oh, I know that you Break the darkness with the light. All the earth let praise arise. Every dead place come alive. Oh, I know that you are good. Oh, I know that you are good. You will have my hallelujah. You alone, the highest name. All to you, I surrender every breath I take. Make my life your praise. Oh, Spirit of the living God, fire burning in my heart awake to who you are oh i know that you are good oh i know that you are good you will have my hallelujah you alone the highest name all to you i surrender strength when I am weak. You are my sight when I can see. As praise goes up, I believe the walls are coming down. Oh, when I was lost, you rescued me. When I was bound, you set me free. As praise goes up, I believe the walls are coming. You are my strength. Oh, you are strength when I am weak. You are my sight when I can see. As praise goes up, I believe the walls are coming down. Oh, when I was lost, you rescued me. When I was bound, you set me free. As praise goes up, I believe the walls are coming down. Sing 
to see the other side Cause we belong to the light When the night is at its darkest Just hold on for the dawn will soon arrive Can you feel the winds are changing There's a new day on the rise And the atmosphere is breaking As a new world comes to life So we will sing, we will dance To the earth that goes the heavens To His praise To see the earth side. Whoa, whoa God, I've got plenty of volume there. You may be seated. <laughs> well, welcome to church this morning. 
Give the Bailey Bunch a big hand there. We'll look at them all taking a couple of rows up and uh, making up the numbers today. We're a little bit light on, but never mind, they're still coming in. Um, just a few ads. Pastor Derek sharing this morning. What are you going to share on, Pastor Derek? God keeps re God keeps his promises. Amen. Well, we need to know that. And uh, we'll be praying at the end for people. And uh, might need to pray for my healing. Look, just after the church uh, finishes, um, Jack's got his car and trailer here, or a little truck. There's a bit of junk around the sides of the church. It'll only take five minutes, he said, but I'll say ten. Ten's more, or fifteen at the most, just to throw it in. So if any um, strong arms, any um, males that uh, can lift things or... Any females that have got hair on your chest or, you know, you're strong and uh, whatever. But anyway, we'll just throw that in the, in the back and uh, he's going to take it away later. Um, we're going to have a, a clean up here at some stage um, when the, down the track and just clean up a bit around the side and everything. So it'll just be a little bit less to do. Um, small groups are back this week. Uh, Jack's group is starting off new with uh, Susan. They'll be here at the church. Ray and Hazel up the back, their church is running. Um, and uh, the young adults, are, they're running uh, once a fortnight. Uh, Renee leads that, so that's good. And what I'm looking at doing is a new Christian or a group for people that's going to run via Zoom. Um, we've got the Zoom set up. And I've talked to a few people, so it would be a Thursday night, about 6.30 for an hour to 7.30. And we've got some good uh, booklets we can give people. So we're going to organise that. And um, so if anyone's interested in that Zoom, you can do it from home and you can have that personal connection. And uh, we'll do the Road Ahead book, which will be a, a new Christian book. And so that'll be six weeks and if you're still keen and that we can do a, a second one called stewardship and it's a good one too but uh, we'll see how that goes um okay just a little bit of homework um we'll be doing um in a few weeks time i'm going to be uh, preaching a message on this year i just felt this year is going to be a year of increase that's what the lord told me although sometimes it doesn't look like that but i believe that's what he wants to do and an increase in souls and an increase in the kingdom of god and things like that and um so um just to let you know and to thank everyone we'll be collecting our, our tithes and offerings shortly um, that uh, we really appreciate um, everybody's input and everything for that. And uh, what we've been able to do is we had, because we got the building finished and we actually own the building, we're very blessed, and we got the renovations done and we, um, we have a budget of about two grand a week. And um, we had um, some surplus in the bank and we had um, a budget for a year ahead. And uh, so our budget money, uh, and it wasn't earning any interest. There's no interest these days. So I didn't quite have enough to buy a house, but I thought we could probably buy a unit. And anyway, we've just had it signed off, but we haven't actually finished it yet. So we bought a unit for 190000 at 200000 all up. The church has paid cash for it and we own it and what we're going to do with that is um, we'll get 280 a week. I've already got someone who wants to be in it. The $80 will cover the um, body corporate and everything and insurances and we'll clear 200 a week which is a bit better than clearing 200 a year on interest and we'll eventually get our money back into our budget account and we can run everything because we don't have to budget it all out at once. So, but so we still need your tithes and offerings. Okay, we're not super, 
duper, but um, we're doing okay, uh, financial area and the church. And so um, with that money, uh, if we clear 200 a week, there's two missionaries, one in Indonesia, a couple, young couple I've met, they uh, live in Canberra, and another young couple will be going to South America, and I've met them here. I'll hopefully bring them to church to introduce them. And I really felt led of the Lord, and I've got to talk to the board Tuesday, but I'll be happy with that. So it's only 100 a month each. I think one needs about six grand. They've got about uh, a month. But they've got 60% covered, so our 100 will give them a little bit more and, um, and the other one. So we can support them. And we can take teams to um, those countries. As you know, when things get on deck, we take teams and we do evangelism, we do conferences. So we'll be able to do that with them. And the young couple are very dedicated, proven people. They're with the um, Australian Christian Churches, so they're working through our organisation. Um, so we can uh, do all that properly. So out of that 200 we clear, um, 50 will go to them, so we're going to give 20% of that profit to them. And uh, uh, and 150 will go into our kitty, just hopefully reduce our budget a little bit. So that will be wonderful. So that's uh, a little bit of housework there. I was praying... Um, um, I don't know, Queen Bian has a homelessness problem and I have people come in here every week living in cars and we give, Tanya looks after the food care and we give emergency food relief, some vouchers and things and we um, have some income set aside for that. Um, if um, uh, someone was talking to me this morning, said he's living in a unit... <laughs> And the lady was going to give him the unit because she's got a thing coming through. I said, oh, don't give it to you, give it to us. <laughs> but, um, it, you know, so I just throw it out there. I'm not manipulating. I'll just throw it out there. I think I would like another unit uh, for the church through a registered charity because the church is a registered incorporation, but we have a registered charity. They're very hard to get. And uh, if we could get a unit, I'd probably rent it for three months to pay for all the body corporate and everything, and then nine months of the year use it as emergency housing free for people who are homeless. Just an idea, but I'm throwing it out there. <laughs> so if you're watching by a live stream or whatever, and there may be somebody that, has, that God has put on your heart. Who knows? Okay, so... Um, that's just a thought. Um, if it happens, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, God's in it. He'll be in it. Sunday uh, school is back today. Yay. <laughs> um, so what else have I got here? We're still waiting for the right time for night services. So I'm hopefully be getting back to those, to high school, um, to high street um, school of ministry, which will... Um, be a, a teaching night on the Sunday nights. And uh, street team um, will be getting back when we get back onto the streets. And we have secured a, more, a table in the mall for free. So when you go into the mall in Queen Bianne, there'll be two chairs and a banner and some information about the Lord and everything on a table. We're not allowed to sort of go over the top and otherwise we get into trouble but we are able to I'm sure we can pray for people if they want prayer or whatever but we can't be attacking people you know and doing all that because we'll annoy them and we'll get into trouble but if we just uh, sit there and hand out some stuff people will talk to us people will pray. so Jack and I are going to kick that off we've got the year once a month and if anyone would like to man that table uh, just put two on it um, you could either go with Jack or myself and we'll train you up how to do it it won't be very hard and so that's going on the 2nd of april it'll be saturday between 10 o'clock and 2 30 although we can stay there between 9 and 5 30 if we wish okay so we're going to do the tithes and offerings now and again thank you very much i think we're uh, putting that all to good good use in the church and for the community and for the world and um uh, we're not here to uh, glean your money and for me to be a millionaire or our people. Most of us here are actually pensioners and 
we uh, volunteer our time. We do get a little bit of supplement and stuff to, to do things, but um, there we go. So it was a basket uh, down the front. So those who still bring cash, thank you very much. And for those that um, give uh, via our bank, the number's up there. And if you can't see it, it's on our website and uh, you can do that. And if anyone likes to give over and above, there's envelopes or if you want to give to a certain thing that's good, um, you know, to whatever, Queen Bean food thing or or for the um, our missionaries or anything else. But we, we do ask that you um, don't put your tithes into that because if everyone done that, then we wouldn't be able to run the church. <laughs> You'd all pick your favourite thing and we'd go, we can't pay the bills. <laughs> so that's how it works. Okay, so um, we're going to read the scripture there. Uh, Deuteronomy 26.10 says, Then you shall set it uh, first fruits before the Lord your God and worship. And when you offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord, offer it of your own free will. And uh, everything's a free will. Nobody in the church here, people come and they don't have the concept of giving. That's fine. Uh, maybe um, in time uh, the Lord can show you the benefits of giving and how it helps other people. I always say um, giving is uh, give and receive ministry. Giving is need-based. Um, for somebody's uh, is seed based giving is is planting a seed and receiving is a need based thing and taking is greed based and so our whole um, attitude is is very good you know it's of our own free will we I'm, I'm happy to put my tithes and offerings in I'm, I rejoice in that I'm glad that I, can, I get excited about that because I know that I'm storing my treasure in heaven that's helping people and uh, it's not something that'll rust and go away and I'll be the richest person in the graveyard, you know. My treasure will be in heaven and it'll be in the lives of people and that's what it's all about in the end. Amen. So let's stand and um, confess this together and for those that still have cash today, um, then we thank you for that. As I give in today's offering, let's confess this together. I rejoice as I bring to the Lord the first fruits of my income and my increase. I worship the Lord with a grateful heart, for he has provided faithfully for me and my house, and I give willingly and cheerfully. Amen. Well, thank you, everyone, and uh, we'll hand back to Peter today uh, as we worship the Lord. The Children's Church can head on out now if they like. Oh, hmm? Oh, communion. Yeah, head on out. I won't hand back, but you can play. But uh, Dominic's going to come and share communion. And I believe he's got a, a good word for us today. And uh, going to start, um, I'm reading from the book of Luke, chapter 22, and uh, I'm going to read from verse 39 to 43, and this is the uh, New King James Version, and it says here, coming out, he went into the Mount of Olives, and as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him, 
when he came to the place which is Gethsemane, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And the last thing it says is, then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. When I saw that part where his sweat became like great drops of blood, I did some research if that can really happen. And this is what I found. There is a, a condition that's called hematidrosis. And that is caused by where blood vessels rupture. And when they rupture, that's what causes the blood and the sweat to mix together. And what causes the rupture is intense stress. Jesus was under intense stress, intense pressure from the burden of carrying the cross, getting ready to go on there. So when I saw that, what I saw was the pressure was so much, it was like Jesus was inside a vice. And as the time drew nearer for him to go on the cross, the vice started turning and turning. And as the vice turned and the time got nearer for him, the pressure was so much from the stress-like vice that it started squeezing blood from out of him. And when I saw in verse 43, it says, Father, not my will, but your will. The pressure and the stress that Jesus was under was even putting pressure on his relationship between him and his father because his will didn't line up with the father's will, even though he still surrendered to the father's will. And what's even more amazing was that when he addresses, when he mentions, not my will, but your will, the first thing he says is, Father, a father is someone you run to to help you out. A father is someone that protects you. A father is somebody that stops harm from coming to you. And this is not just any ordinary father. This is God the Father. This is the God the Father that he has all authority and all power. As soon as he says a word, he can make the mountains bow. But he didn't rescue his son. Why? He held himself back. He held himself back with all his might, with all his power, with all his authority. And he allowed his son to go through what he went through. And he didn't rescue him because he wanted to rescue you and I. And I just really sensed this morning that as I was going into this word, another amazing thing about this whole scenario was that the blood of Jesus the precious blood of Jesus, the powerful blood of Jesus that was already being spilt before he even got to the cross. For your sin, my sin, and the sins of the world. So as, as, as we gather this morning around, around this time, we're not coming into a time where this is a routine because we do this every Sunday. We're gathering around a time where we give God all the thanks with all that we are and we treat this time with the utmost reverence and respect. Why? Because it cost God the Father and His Son everything for you and I. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, O oh God, that uh, we come before you this morning and we give you thanks with all that we are, with all that we have for you. We thank you, Lord, that... Uh, as, as we see here this morning, that not only was your son under pressure, but you were under pressure, Father. So we thank you for all that you went through. Lord, we give you all glory, honor, and praise. And may we always be mindful of what it took for us to be rescued and saved from the consequences of sin in our lives. Lord, I pray for these emblems, Lord. I give you thanks for the, for the, the drink that represents your precious blood. Uh, for the biscuit and the bread that represents your body that was beaten mercilessly. And we give you all glory, honor, and praise this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Eat and drink this morning, church.
great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain i could not climb in desperation i turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written jesus christ my living hope who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the god of ages step down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross is spoken i am forgiven the king of kings calls me his own beautiful savior i'm yours forever jesus christ my living home. Hallelujah. the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me then came the morning then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body Began to breathe out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Jesus, yours is a victory. Oh, hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise the one who said.
deeper your love on the line to bear the weight of sin that was mine washing my river of wrongs into the sea of your infinite love you put you put your love on the line sweating blood to bear the weight of sin that was mine washing my river of wrong to the sea of your infinite love with arms held high Lord I give my life knowing I'm found in Christ in your love forever with all I am in your grace I'll stand the greatest of all Romans, love of God, my Savior. Mercy roll. Like hurricane wind, furious love laid waste to my sin. With arms, with arms held high, I give my life, knowing I'm found in Christ, in your love for. To the one, to the one who has rescued my soul, to the one who has welcomed me home, to the one who is Savior of all, I sing forever. To the one who has rescued my soul, to the one who has welcomed me home, to the one who is Savior of all. Sing to the one ever, to the one who has rescued my soul, to the one who has welcomed me home, to the one who is Savior of all. I sing to the one forever, to the one who has rescued my soul, to the one who has welcomed me home. To the one who is Savior of With arms, with arms held high, Lord, I give my life, knowing I'm found in Christ and your love forever. Lord, I am in your grace. Stand greatest of all holiness of a God, my Savior. To the one who has rescued my soul, to the one who has welcomed me home, to the one who has 
sing, oh, to the one, to the one who has rescued my soul, to the one who has welcomed me, to the one who is Savior of all. to your hands I commit again all I am for you Lord hold my world in the palm of your hand and I am yours forever Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live. You're the reason that I sing with all I with you wherever you go through tears and joy I'll trust in you and I will live in all of your ways and your promises forever Jesus I Jesus I believe Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live. You're the reason that Jesus, Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live. You're the reason that I sing.
Come on. I will worship. Jesus, Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live. You're the reason that I sing. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong. That I sing with all I have. Spend a bit more time. belong to you. You're the reason that I live. You're the reason that I sing. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I belong to you. You're the reason that I live. You're the reason that I sing. With all I am, I will worship. worship team that was excellent thank you very much it's good to get into the presence of God through the power of the music it's wonderful uh, good morning to you all church how are we all we're all good I, I, I know you're all smiling you are aren't you <laughs> I hope so um uh, one thing, I'm not sure whether my wife reminded me to make sure I tell all you ladies that you have a, um, uh, this Friday night, you have a um, meeting here uh, with uh, supper's going to be supplied. It starts at uh, 7, I think. Yeah, 7 o'clock till 9. A um, couple of good speakers. So if you are at 3, then uh, please come along. It will be a good night. Okay, let's start with a bit of a prayer. Thank you, Lord, for today. Let's thank you, Father God, that, Lord, we've already heard um, a great message, Lord, this morning. So, Father God, I just thank you for the word that you've 
speak to people, Lord, the word that you keep, Lord. Father God, I just ask that you just speak to people today, Lord. That you enter into people's hearts, Lord, and just, um, Lord God, just drop a seed here and there, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, um, that's the title. It wasn't the original title. Um, the original title was a, a, a bit confronting, I guess. I, I had called it, Are You a Quitter? But then uh, I, I, I then I get the title first and then I, I sort of wrote the, or get the scriptures. And after I'd written it all, I thought, oh, me, I can't really call it that. Uh, it's a bit over the top, so I call it that instead. <laughs> All right, so and, and the message it's inspired and came from a um, a word that Dom, my friend Dom over here, uh, brought at our prayer meeting uh, on a Tuesday night about uh, three weeks ago, and this is what he said. Can we? It says this is what the revelation to Dom from the Lord says. It says the devil can't defeat you; you're only defeated when you give in. Yeah, so the devil can't defeat you. You're only defeated when you give in. And uh, I find that quite poignant at this time because we've got so much uncertainty uh, in the world, in our daily lives. We've got so many rules and regulations and they seem to change at the drop of a hat at the whim of some health bureaucrat somewhere up in Pitt Street in Sydney or wherever, Macquarie Street, sorry. Yeah, not Pitt Street, Macquarie Street. And, and they just seem to be blown around by every little wind that blows on, across them. So, so it, it is a bit of a worry that, uh, you know, we have so many things and so many restrictions on our lives. And it, it does make people worry. And it can affect people in so many different ways. You know, so many different ways. But we, the believers in Christ, if we're not grounded in our understanding of just who we are and the promises made over us, then we too can find ourselves in a state of complete and utter panic. Um, you know, not knowing what to do, where to do, what, what to say, whatever. But, but if we are Christians, then we should not be being battered from pillar to post. We shouldn't be uh, wavering. We shouldn't find ourselves in a position where we're uncertain. Because God has made so many promises to us. And he's made a lot. Uh, and if we don't know them or don't, can't rely on them and we can't go and find them at certain times in our lives, well then, yeah, we can certainly get all weak of the knees and and wander away. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that some people don't have a legitimate reason for the way they feel. But we, as Christians, have a hope and a promise. And those promises outweigh every negative thought that's being pushed our way by the world. You know, if you listen to the news, uh, not that I listen to it much these days, but if you listen to the news, you know, it's all doom and gloom. They tell you how many people got COVID. You know, there was 24,000 people tested positive with COVID today. Okay, 24,000 people got tested with COVID. How many people ended up in hospital? Very few. Very few, percentage-wise. And I, I used to be a public servant. Statistics was my game. I could make statistics say whatever I wanted to uh, by just manipulating figures and so on. So, so I can see that, you know, if you, if you focus on 24,000 got COVID, then, ooh, yes, panic. But if you concentrate on those out of 24,000, only 20 got had to go to hospital, and out of 20, out of those 20, only one ended up in ICU. It's a different set of statistics, isn't it? You look at things a little bit differently. 
So I don't look at the, uh, the overall numbers because uh, they, they're basically meaningless. But, you know, so then there's this other thing that happens, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of an old dinosaur, really, um, when it comes to technology and, and this. But there's this thing called the, the, the internet, and I've used it a few times, and it is good for what I want to use it for, but it can also be, be for bad. But I've noticed that the, there's these things, it seems to be ruled by people called influencers. Is that right? I think that's what they call influencers. And, and it seems that the more followers you've got, the more credibility you seem to have, even if you're talking nonsense. But if you've got a million people and you talk stupid, you still have credibility, apparently. All right? Now, if, if that is the case, then I would say that the biggest and the greatest influencer in the world is Jesus Christ. Because he has more followers than all the influencers put together. Okay. So if we, if we are going by the words of what influencers tell us, and they, as the word in, would indicate, influence how you behave and what you think and what you do, then surely Christ is the greatest influencer on your life, or should be. More so than all these Kim Kardashians and whoever else is, is, on, is on there. Yeah, okay, so, so what does Jesus have to say about the situation that we find ourselves in? So first of all, you've got to recognize that Jesus came to earth for one purpose. And that was to reconcile man, that's us, um, I use man, you know, both women and men, okay? It's not a, I'm not sexist, although I have been accused of being sexist, but I'm just old-fashioned. Sorry about that. <laughs> but, but Jesus came to bring us back to God, to reconcile us to God. And it was to be a once and for all event, okay? Up to this point of time, uh, the Jewish nation uh, sacrificed animals and they went to their temple once a year and they sacrificed animals and they you know sent the poor old goat out into the into the wilderness and all that kind of stuff to to get rid of their sin but it never got rid of their sin because they went out the door and did the same thing again and come back next year and did it all over again and so you know god said oh well, that's not working so let's get something else so he sent jesus and as we heard this morning it, it costs god a lot cost him everything when he sent Jesus. And this is what, um, this is a, a part of the, the whole uh, the story in, in John. But this is just one part. So in John's account, chapter 19, verse 30, this is what happened. Jesus is nailed to the cross. And he said, when he had received the drink, Jesus says, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. In other words, he died. Okay. And... Um, and I looked at that and I thought, okay, so what does this, it is finished. I mean, okay, so what, it is finished. What does that mean? Well, as I said, I looked at the internet. So I got on the internet and I had a good look. And uh, it's interesting when you find out there's lots of uh, different opinions about what Jesus meant by it is finished. And some go into some very highly technical uh, theological answers, which went went about ten foot over my head. Uh, okay, I don't understand that, so I'll let that one go. But this one that I did like, and it's translated from the Greek word tetastelai. I think that's how it's pronounced. Pardon my Greek if it's not. But what it means, it's a Greek word. And it means, it's an accounting term, and it means paid in full. So when Jesus said it is finished, Jesus said, I've paid it. I've paid the price in full for every sin that's ever been committed or ever will be committed by you, me, and everybody else on the planet. Paid in full. 
So as born-again believers, we acknowledge that the death and resurrection of Jesus on the cross at Calvary paid the price for a debt we could never hope to pay. Okay, the Jews have been doing it for, I don't know, 2,000, 3,000 years, this particular uh, sacrificing for their sins. And it had never, it was ongoing forever and ever and ever. It would never have been, never enough, never enough. You know, and there's a there's a few religions around that make it almost impossible for you to get to heaven because there's always something that you've got to do. And it's interesting. Jesus, you don't have to. Jesus paid the price for you. All you need to do is accept Jesus and your debt is paid. So it's a free gift. And it requires us to allow Jesus into our hearts through his Holy Spirit. That's it. Simple. You don't have to wear special underwear. You don't have to go to church five times a day or, or pray five times a day. or you, you don't have to face in a particular direction don't have to do any of that. All you have to do is accept Jesus into your heart and into your life. And it's very simple. And it's life-changing, and it's life-changing just like that. I do it with that hand, but I've never been able to click that finger. But I will. I can do it with that one. Very strange. You see, what we see is that it's uh, the thing that kept man apart from God. It was cancelled at the cross. Your sin, my sin, cancelled at the cross. We receive grace, freely given. But it it was given to us at such a high cost. So I I remind you again of the revelation. The devil can't defeat you. You're only defeated when you give in. So what else can we find in Scripture that can bolster our fight during trying times? So I was said, firstly, you know, during the last couple of years, as it has been a couple of years now, there's been uh, an overwhelming feeling among some people in churches that they're on their own. Yeah. And many have walked away from church life. Hopefully some will return, but unfortunately a few will probably won't. A fear of the unknown has taken a hold over many people's hearts, and in giving in to fear, They have let a feeling dictate their course of action. So what does the word have to say about what we're feeling? Isaiah chapter 41, verse 9 and 10, we read, this is what God says. I took you from the ends of the earth, from its furthest corners I called you. I said to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So a couple of things stick out from this scripture. Firstly, it is God who calls us. Okay, so you're all called. If you're Christians, then God called you. Um, Sometimes we think we found God, but um, yeah, well, I guess we did in a way, but God called us. It's God that does the calling. It is us that does... We bow down our knee and say, thank you, Lord. But it is God that calls us. You know, secondly, we are to be his servants. And we serve the Lord. And and in in serving God, it's not an arduous task. It's not something that makes you feel, you know, that you're under a great deal of weight or in fact, it's light. In fact, it's very easy to follow God. It's very easy if you keep your eyes on Him. Thirdly, so we are a chosen people. He chose us. You're special. You're unique because God chose you. And then fourthly, He tells us we are not to fear. Don't fear. Fear is something that we all experience from time to time. You know, some fear is healthy, 
and it allows us to keep out of danger. See, I don't like water. I'm a pom, so that explains that. Sorry about that. So, you know, so I, I have no fear of a shark ever going to eat me because it's going to have to grow leeks and, 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 and walk from Bateman's Bay. So there's no way in the world, you know. So a bit of fear can be healthy. On the other hand, a bit of other types of fear can be very, very unhealthy. Can be very unhealthy. So what then do we need? Well, the opposite of fear is peace, I think. So this is what God says in Isaiah chapter 26. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, your, the Lord himself is the rock eternal. The Lord is the rock eternal. He never changes. He never changes. He was the same yesterday. He's the same today, and he'll be the same tomorrow. God never changes. You know, I, I change probably every five minutes. I was doing something or thinking something or moving one way or the other, but, but God doesn't. God stays the same. If you come back to God in a month, two months, whatever, God will be the same. God, he doesn't change. So our peace over fear comes from God, and it's not from any feelings we might have. Feelings often depend on the moment, and they can vary at any point, given point of time. You know, Hebrews um, in chapter 13 says this about Jesus, Jesus being God. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. See, I, I, I like to use passages uh, in my messages from the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. See, for the New Testament doesn't get, do away with the Old Testament. It basically, it confirms it. It confirms what is in the Old Testament. So every promise God ever made in the Old Testament is just as relevant today as it was when it was written. It doesn't matter that it's in the Old Testament. You can't just simply say, oh, well, that's in the Old Testament. Forget it. It doesn't apply today because it does. It applies today. Every promise that God has ever made in the Old and the New Testament applies equally the same. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8. And this is where God makes a, a place to all who believe in him. This, this is what it says from verse 8. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. You see, God's promise is he's always going to be with you. The trick is, okay, is to believe the promise. Well, it's not a trick, but it's just a, it's something that you must be able to do for the promise to take effect. Okay, now, not that I've got it, but if I was to promise you a million dollars and say, you know, okay, I promise you a million dollars, until you actually come to me and I give you the million dollars, it's, well, it's just mere words, isn't it? But as soon as I give you the million dollars, it's a promise fulfilled. Don't come to me because I don't have the million dollars. But but you get the gist, okay? A promise is only a promise is if you go and take it, grab a hold of it and use it and run with it. Otherwise, it's just empty words and it's just rhetoric. You know, I can promise you all a million dollars and never deliver. That's not a very good promise, is it? But I did promise, but I just can't deliver. But God, on the other hand, promises and delivers. So you just got to believe it. You believe it. it can, and again, you know, if you're tempted to allow fear to rule over you, then I, I remind you again of this revelation. The devil can't defeat you. You're only defeated when you give in. See, Others 
over the last couple of years have found the going tiring. And even to the point of exhaustion. Uh, you know, and it is uh, understandable because of the, the volatility, is that what's the word? Volatility or something? Volatile. It's, it's, it's the word, the world's just like gone to hell in a basket, as they say. Pardon my French. You know, but it's so difficult these days. Everything changes so quickly, so rapidly. But see, if you're feeling weary and if you're feeling like, well, cheapest why how can I go on? What can I do to go on? This is what Matthew has to say. Matthew chapter 11. This is Jesus speaking. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's a question of coming to Jesus and allowing him to lift the burden off you. It's a lot easier to walk around when you don't have the weight of the world on your shoulders. So much easier. And another scripture, well-known scripture from the book of Isaiah Again, reinforces that God is our strength when we put our total focus on him. It says this, uh, but those who, who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Sounds like fabulous looking eagle. So a friend once said to me, Derek, you have a scripture for everything. And, and you know something? He's right. There is a scripture for everything. You just need to know where it is. And most importantly, as I've already said, believe it works. If you don't believe it works, then have a guess what? It won't work. You know? Well, this, I, prom I tried to do a few years back, you know, Put to a, uh, 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 what was I putting together? Uh, whatever it was, uh, it was in one of those very good um, uh, Japanese English instructions. And after about two hours, I, I, I gave up in disgust because it weren't working. My son, who was living with us at the time, said, Dad, go for a walk. Uh, yeah, okay. So off I went. And I was out for about 20 minutes and I came back and oh, but guess what? He'd fixed it. So there, 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 there's a, a tip for us oldies. If you're putting something together, give it to a young one. They, 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 know, how to, they know how to read these things. So you've got to know the scriptures, know how they work. Make sure that you understand the instructions. read that one. There's trouble with this. It flicks from things. Yep, okay, here we go. You know, Jesus has some very interesting things to say about making things happen. When you believe in something, and this is what he says in Mark 11, verse 22. He says, have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain... Go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. So, you know, if you've got a mountain in your life, you go tell it to jump. You don't need mountains in your life. Go tell them to jump. But see, before you can do all of that, and while you're doing all that, there's something very important about that scripture that a lot of us forget. You know, we're all thinking, oh, well, I'll just tell this thing to go. 
but there's something very important about that scripture. And what it is, is about forgiveness. It says, if you have anything against anybody, forgive them. And then, and then your Father in heaven will forgive you. And then things will happen. Forgiveness is such an important part of Christian life. Unforgiveness is so, so destroying. It's incredibly how destroying unforgiveness is because unforgiveness can make you as sick as a dog while not affecting the other person at all. But unforgiveness in your heart can make you so cranky and angry and and it can just destroy you. But unforgiveness is terrible. Forgiveness is what you need to do. See, when you pray for something and you expect it to happen, believe it. Because I can tell you again, the devil can't defeat you. You're only defeated when you give in. See, so keep on believing. Keep on praying. Keep on seeking God. Keep on believing. Check yourself. Make sure that there is no unforgiveness in your heart, that you you have truly, truly forgiven people. And it's amazing how God can put the finger on things and go, oh, well, do you remember this or do that? And then you, you need to deal with it. You need to get God in on it and get, get it out of your life. Get forgiveness. Bring forgiveness in. And then there's those that are full of anxiety. It's similar in many ways to fear, but it's usually about things that might happen that in reality never do. Uh, this is a five-year-old, 500-year-old saying from uh, a guy called Michael de Montagu. Montagu. He's obviously French. My French is as good as my English. Terrible. So, But this is what he said. My life has been filled with terrible misfortune, most of which never happened. And again, another search on, on good old uh, internet through Google comes up with that 85% in this particular s survey in America through some university there, 85% of the people that they surveyed, what they worried about never happened. 85%. But this is what Jesus says in Matthew 6.34. It says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble on its own. You see, and, and how do we not worry? You know, worry seems to be a very natural thing for us to do. You know, seems to be the first port of call. When anything happens, we, we just worry about it. But this is what Jesus says about how we, or a clue that Jesus gives us, about how, how we can not worry about, you know, how we don't, don't worry. It says this, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And that's what Jesus was talking about, your clothes and your food and all of that kind of stuff. And he said, Jesus, just don't worry about any of that. God knows what you need, and God will provide you what you need. Seek his kingdom first. See, worry can add years to your appearance and take years off your life expectancy. Um, yeah, well, I might as well tell you, I am, I am now in my 70s. I was looking forward to that, oh hum, but yes, it happened. And unfortunately, I couldn't stop it. But if I do say so myself, I don't look too bad. I had a haircut on Wednesday and I... Shrapped up pretty well, I think. I look like a, I've been dragged through a hedge backwards before I went to the barber, mind you, but after he'd done his little magic trick, I wasn't too bad. See, so, uh, you know, I, I, I've learned through experience that worry is not going to get me anywhere. 
and, and you know, I give it to God because, let's face it, God's been around a lot longer than I have and he's got more experience than I will ever have. So he knows how, what to do with it. I just have to give it to him. See, and that's the trick. Again, another trick. But it takes hard work. And it takes perseverance. But you've got to learn to leave it with God. A lot of us, and myself included, in my early years, I'd give something to God. Five seconds later, I'd have it back. And go, oh, you, you, you weren't quick enough, God. I'll let, leave it with me. I'll fix it. And I guess what? I didn't fix it. In fact, it probably got worse. So I, over the years, I've learned that, okay, if, I, if I've got a problem, give it to God and then, okay, it's yours. And then you can come and ask me 10 minutes later. I go, oh, I don't know. God's got it. He'll fix it. And he usually does. End of story. Stop worrying. So it's not easy to master, but it is something that you get, you get, you can get used to because once you see God move in a situation and you see him move over your life or whatever, then the next time that situation happens, and, and um, let me get this straight to you guys, um, situations don't usually happen just once, okay, or twice, <laughs> Uh, they're multiple situations. But once you see God move on that situation, it's a lot simpler to give God that problem the next time. And when he's moved on that problem, it's then easier to give him some other problem that you might have got. But the thing is, is that you just let God have it. Pray about it, whatever you like. And no one, absolutely no one, is exempt from issues in life. They're certainly not this side of heaven. So if you're tempted to let these things overpower you, remember, again, the devil can't defeat you. You are only defeated when you give in. Okay, this is what Jesus says in John 8, verse 36. He says, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. So if you've got issues and problems and, and you're tied down to things, the Son of God will set you free. And this is how it happens, okay? Jesus was speaking to some of his followers in how to obtain this freedom. John 8, verse 31. To the Jews who believed in him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Okay. There is a condition to being set free, following the teachings of Christ. And the teachings of Christ will set you free. You see, unfortunately, a few churches are moving away from the teachings of Christ, as, as they relate to us in the New Testament through the writings of the Apostles. Now, if you were to ask why, the answer would be that the church needs to modernize its thinking. It needs to be relevant to today's world. It needs modern thinking to capture modern audiences. Well, my question to, if that's what you are, is then why is your church not growing? If you've modernized your understanding of Scripture, then why is your church not growing? A simple answer to that is that it's Christ, it's God who makes the church grow. Oh, well, we can try all sorts of different projects and, and have all different strategies and all this, that and the other. But if God's not in any of all that, it's not going to happen. You know, you can have fantastic preaching, you can have fantastic worship you can have all the programs under the sun but if God isn't in any of that then it ain't going to work it's only through the power of the Holy Spirit that will bring those things to life will bring life into those situations nothing else
We need to be obedient then to, to the teachings that Christ has laid out for us. Um, a lot of people have died for it. And then Jesus asked his disciples a question in Matthew chapter 16. And he says this, but, who, but what about you, he said? Well, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Revelation. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Now, uh, people will say, well, that means that the church is built on Peter. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's built on the revelation of who Christ is. That is the rock that the church is built on. Nothing else. The Christ is the Son of God. That is the rock that the church is, bu is built on. Nothing else. It's a revelation. See, the church in this world cannot be overcome. I have a mountain of scriptures, in fact. This is just a quick one. Uh, and it's, there's 52 here. <laughs> there, these are the promises of God. There's, there's a lot more, I'm sure. But 52 on for various different things, various aspects of life that you might be feeling or going through. There is a scripture for every one of them. For fear, for loneliness, for doubt, for anything else. You name it, it's, it's in there. All you've got to do is find it. And these days, finding these things is so simple, even for an old fogey like me. You know, go to the internet, type in the word you want to look at, and boom, within a split second, there's thousands of them, answers, that is. And, and then, you, you know, you can just go through it, find out what, is, what the Lord is saying to you. Do not believe everything that you see on that screen, okay? And some of it's good and some of it's rubbish. So you need the spirit to talk to you, to tell you, okay, that's a good one. What is quickened to your spirit when you read it? Okay, what jumps out at you? What, what, what resonates with you? And if you're walking in the spirit, that's the thing that you want to look at. All this other garbage, you just forget. Let it go. Let it go. So we have a mountain of scriptures that we could have gone through. We could have been here all day. But, but the, almost the last thing I want to say, and just in case you haven't quite caught on yet, this is what I want to say. The devil can't defeat you. You're only defeated when you give in. Have you got it? Have you got it? Okay. You are the victor. You are victorious. You are victorious. Don't give in. Don't give in. Okay. And as I said um, earlier on, I think I said, I may have missed it, but part of my message was that um, being saved is a free gift. And it requires just a simple, um, a simple prayer to get that gift. Okay, and this is uh, this is what I found. Again, another simple search, but it came up with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. They these are called sinners' prayers. Okay, so I'm going to um, ask if you would just. I'm going to read it off. It's up in the. Can we all? Oh yeah. Well, I'm going to just read it. And I just want you to, uh, if you want to, you can uh, say it off the off the uh, off the board, off the off the screen. Say it in your heart. Follow after me. If you if you don't want to do it now, you can look back later. All these sermons are on our Facebook page and the High Street website, so you can look at, look at it later. And you can read it at your own leisure. But may I stress the, the most important thing. Christ is coming back. 
There is no doubt in my mind that he's coming back. The things that are happening in the world are all pointing to the fact that he's coming back. Don't know when. I'm not going to put a date on it. But, uh, you know, like some people do. But, uh, but he is coming back. And the worse the world gets, the sooner he's coming back. Or the closer he is coming back. Okay. But what he says he's coming back for? He's coming back for you and me. And he's going to want to know, have you said this prayer? Are you a believer in me? Or are you not? It's a simple question. Do you believe in me? Yes or no? So it's a yes or no answer. You don't have to be going on for, you know, well, yeah, I could have done, but, I, you know, I had this to do and I had to, and, and then my friend said this and then this happened and that happened and, oh, uh, well, you know, I was going to get round to it, but I never did. Oh, uh, yeah, well, maybe I could have done. Oh, yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? And it's a very simple, very easy as I said, there's many, many, many on the, on, on the internet. But this is said. And this is, what, this is how this one goes. Okay, so if you want to close your eyes and just, uh, and I, as I read it, if you, at the end, if you've, um, if you've said it in your heart, then at the end you can say the amen. And God knows your heart. God knows you better than you know you. Okay, so this is what it says. It says, Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge to you that I am a sinner and I am sorry for my sins and that the life that I have lived, I need your forgiveness. I believe that your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, shed his precious blood on the cross of Calvary and died for my sins. And I am now willing to turn from my sin. You said in the Bible that if we confess the Lord our God and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved. Right now, I confess Jesus as my Lord. With my heart, I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. This very moment, I accept Jesus Christ as my own personal Savior. And according to his word, right now, I am saved. And we all said, Amen which is let it be, let it be so. And that, uh, I got that from a, uh, a website, which is up there somewhere, paulbarksdale.com. So I thank you for Paul. Um, but there are many, many money. So if, you're on, so if you're online today, if you're on Facebook or whatever else the church is putting this out on, and, and that the message and the prayer has touched your heart, then please, you know, just drop us a comment. Let us know if you need a Bible or, or something else, and we will only be too happy to try and assist you coming to know Christ as your personal Savior. And, and that is reinforced by His Word, and His Word is in the Bible. So as you read the Bible, the Word is reinforced to you. You get re revelation from the Bible. It opens up so many things in your life that it's like, oh, wow, what an amazing journey to be on. So, so the church is only too happy to help and assist you in any way that we can. All you need to do is drop us a line or come and say hi to Pastor Wayne or myself or any of the other Dong, any, any of our uh, wonderful leaders, Peter over here, Linnell. Just come and ask them. And they're only too happy to pray with you, pray for you, whatever it might be. So that's uh, the message for today. So the Lord bless you and keep you. And Lord, may his countenance, may his face shine upon you this week. And may you go out in victory because that's who you are. You are victorious people. I praise the Lord. Amen. So uh, I think Pastor Wayne, I'll hand back to you. Pastor Wayne. Well, God bless Annie. He's not here today, so we just have one prayer request today. So for Danny, and um, a bit hard to understand again. Um, this is for his friend Jason, and he's thanking Jesus for his pal Jason. 
Yes. He okay. loves him a lot. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, Derek. Just prayed it. We all agree. Amen. Well, God bless. Um, some of us probably go down the mall for lunch, so um, we'll see you down there. And uh, God, just have a, a great morning, great afternoon. There's coffee and tea out there. Um, clean your hands. Try and uh, obey the rules and keep ourselves as safe as possible. And uh, have a wonderful day. God bless you. Amen. We um. <laughs>